turn to Romans chapter 8. We are going to do some praying. Now, there are 12 major, major, major uh, benefits of speaking in other tongues, praying in the spirit. Um, there are a number of them in the scripture. One of them, there are 12 major, major, major. There are other benefits apart from them. One of them made clear in the word of God is for healing and for sustaining your health. Um, if you really pray in the spirit a lot, not only that you will live very long, you will be able to always detoxify your body, clean out the things that can kill you. Or a robot who went to be with the Lord, I think it was last year, at the age of 93, was asked his greatest discovery. No, 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 get my voice back and leave it as it is. Now, his greatest discovery in more than 60 years of being a Christian. Who are these people playing with the sound system? Who is that man? He was asked his um, greatest discovery. One of them he mentioned is the power of seed, seed faith. The other is praying in the spirit. Kenny Hagen was asked his greatest discovery. He said praying in the spirit and then following the guidance how to be led of the spirit. He said just those two, anybody that knows it will be wealthy. You cannot know how to hear from God and be poor. Because it will show you where to invest, what to do with your career, what to do. You cannot. Many of, of us don't know how to hear from God. We know how to feel with our emotion, how to operate with our five senses. We have not cultivated the sixth sense. If it's the bad guy, the people out there, they say the third eye. You have not cultivated it. The prophetic eye, you have not. You, the only way to do it is praying in the spirit. You're going to make praying in the spirit at least an hourly discipline every day. Just like every now and then I'm not traveling, I have to go to the gym. I don't go there because I'm fat. I go there because I want to keep fit. I go there because there are things inside your system you don't see that kill people. You don't wait till they clog up your arteries and clog up your blood vessels and give you a heart attack. You go there to break them down and detoxify them. I also know that there are hormones that exercise release. They call it feel good hormones. Now that is physical exercise which the scripture said benefits little. But then you have spiritual exercise that has all round benefit. It gives you physical benefit, financial benefit, career benefits, spiritual benefits and so on and so forth. Praying in the spirit is your daily exercise. It detoxifies your spiritual man. All the junks, it cleans out. It, detox, it, 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 it pumps your eyes open. You can see like yesterday with the fire that was here with the Rema word. God, God possessed a man and was speaking direct Rema word. Yet there were people who couldn't hear it. You can imagine why Jesus Christ was here in the flesh. God literally in the flesh. And some people still perish under his ministry. How else will a man hear? If you can't hear when the Rema word is coming, when God's presence is manifest, what else will help you? What else can help that kind of person? That's why I found that there is nothing worse than spiritual blindness. But you know what praying in the spirit does? It, it, it knocks open all those block channels in your spiritual system. It gets everything working. Your spiritual digestive system, your perceptive antennas will be sharp. Everything will be working. It destroys spiritual dullness. Now, a robot university conducted a research. Maybe you should sit for a little.
the medical faculty of a robot university conducted a research. Uh, one or two experiences they had and uh, they conducted a research. They found out that the stress hormone in the human body, which causes a lot of problems for people, praying in the spirit brings it down. They found out that the feel happy hormone that exercise releases, praying in the spirit does it. They found that there are two major hormones that not only lengthen people's days, but helps to preserve their health, help to suppress what is called antioxidants, free radicals that causes aging, and uh, some of these other things that create problems in our system. They found that when people start praying in the spirit, these other hormones are released that go and counter it. And they've been wondering what is the connection between this thing and the human body. Why does it work like this? But Romans chapter 8 verse 11 said, If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, one of the things it does is to quicken your mortal bodies. If the power of the spirit is focused on a particular issue, through spiritual praying, is focused, let's assume somebody has cancer. Let's assume somebody has HIV. It would dissolve it. What we do is that we don't even get in there. We just stay in the shallow waters. Sometimes uh, pray for 15 minutes in a day, some five minutes in a day. So a robot said when they told him some of his organs failed, he realized that a spirit that can raise a dead man that has been in the grave three days can quicken any organ. The issue is stay there till you break in. Because the Holy Ghost is locked into your human spirit. That's where he lives. And because your human spirit lives in your body, so you can also say your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Because both of them live there. That's where he lives. But you've got to pray in the spirit till that, that glory within the holiest of holies comes out and fills the temple. At that moment, your physical body becomes one of the uh, aspect of you to be benefited by what you have done. I, I, I always put it in another way. I said the river of God, which is what the Holy Spirit is, he, he said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, has four levels of depth. There is ankle depth. It's just here. You can't swim in it. Even babies can't. And that's where many Christians live. That's why they can carry headache up and carry the Holy Ghost in. And there is no connection, no effect. But this power we are transmitting that is raising cripples, opening blind eyes, is the same thing that they are carrying inside. The difference is that they have not learned or maybe have not been taught, and some have been taught, but they have not cultivated the discipline of unlocking that stream. So they, they stay at ankle deep. Some even stay at the dry bed where the water is so dry because nothing is allowed to flow. It's meant to be fl- you, 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 Praying in the spirit is like starting your gym and then the electricity starts flowing. That's one of the advantages we're given in the New Testament that they didn't have in the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, you will hear and the hand of the Lord came upon so, so, and so or this prophet and sometimes for 20 years it won't show up. Do you know that there are some prophets, they brought the word of God only four times in their lifetime, some twice in their lifetime. The anointing fell on them only twice in a whole lifetime. How do you explain that? Do you know, you see the multitude of the nation of Israel depend on one man because most of the time you don't find more than two of them in a, in a particular time. During the time of Haggai, it was Zachariah that was working with him. 
during the time of Jesus, it was John the Baptist. No other voice. During the time of Isaiah, it was Hosea. During the time of Moses, it was just Aaron the high priest and then Miriam who also functioned. The rest of the mil three million people were there. The New Testament gave us, he said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. There, a whole multitude of people are being launched into what used to come only on the prophets, on the kings and the priests. And yet many are still living as if they don't have access to this. In those days, they will seek to go and see Elijah. They will seek to go and see Elisha. Because when they meet the prophets, their problem will be solved. That Holy Spirit that used to come on those prophets now dwells in the believer. And you are given the ability to speak in a supernatural language as a means of bringing him on. Because the anointing within is not the one that heals the sick. It's not the one that breaks down mountains. It's the one upon. You have to unlock it and it will come on you. You have to unlock it. And when you unlock it, it overshadows you. It's like yesterday, it was all over the whole place. It wasn't just a human being. It was in the whole auditorium and the atmosphere. So at that moment, every word that is spoken is executed. But it's that power that executes. One of the benefits is preservation of your health. We have a pastor here. It's Pastor Bonnie here. He was beaten by a snake around 1 a.m. And the snake is viper. 1 a.m. in the night where they went on a, a mission. And then the people were looking. There was no hospital. This happened in a campus at um, Abia State University. And there was no, nowhere, nowhere. You even need to see the location of the particular school we're talking about. Away from town. The capital city of that place is Omaha, and this place was out through valleys, and you get there. Anybody who knows about that school? Uh -huh. And they were talking about how to get him to town 1 a.m. in the night, in the middle of the night. That snake bites him. And so he was dying. The heart started seizing, the blood started congealing, and then your eye turns. Just like, you know, I'm sure Paul, when he beat Paul in the Bible, he went through some of those early. Then he remembered, I have a, a poison neutralizer. You can't carry the Holy Ghost and die of snake bite. You, you, we are, people are dying now. It breast cancer everywhere. Cancer, this, this one, that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, my friends, my friends, my friends. There is something that can drive away that mutation in your gene. If it's cancer gene and kill it and preserve your body. You are carrying it in your tongue. Death and life is on the power of the tongue. It's not just about positive confession. And so he remembered because we've thought about it. There are emergency hours. So now that there is no help, he either stay there and die or turn on the river of the river of life. That river, that river is inside you, locked up in your spirit. Yet your body is supposed to benefit. And so he's always praying in spirit. And of course, when you start initially, you don't feel good, you don't feel power, you don't feel anything, you know. But that's the point. Keep on. Stay there till the battery comes on. And he kept praying. And he was dying. And he kept speaking it. And he was dying. But he knew you can't die. He shut that mouth up. He kept praying. And this thing was seizing his heart. His breath he was losing his breath. And he kept praying. And he kept praying. And he kept praying. And he kept praying. And somewhere. That water came up. He moves from ankle deep to knee deep. The second level is knee deep. Then he gets to waist deep. At least at this level, is uh, beginners can swim. Babies can swim. Babies swim in pool. Children swim in pool. But then the Bible said the fourth level is a river that has no bottom. That you can't reach its bottom. That's when we talk about the flowing in the spirit, being carried by the spirit. That's when people flow. You see how that river carried us for how many hours last night? That's how you can function. That, at that realm, everything is possible. All you need to do is speak. 
All you need to do is address mountains and they will melt. All you need to do is speak to anything. Now, the people who serve Satan understand the incantations. Sometimes they have a battle or they are annoyed and they want to punish somebody. It might be the one that requires 21 incantation. They don't tell you they are tired. Uh, he will continue. He has to complete the 21 incantation. When he completes it, he calls the man's name. Oh good, oh good, run mad, mad, mad. The guy runs mad. Unless he's a believer that's covered, that's under the covering of Christ, he's going to run mad. He has completed that. Now he has power to decree. Because at that moment now, your tongue just becomes like God's earthly voice. It's actually a spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is God that is now talking. When you speak, it's the voice of deity that creation hears. That's why they obey you. You know, people wonder how Elijah, Moses, all these men were able to operate. Now, the anointing of Paul will come upon them at certain times. But my friend, you don't have to wait for it when it likes to come on you. You have been given a key to bring it on. If you read Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 12, it talks about the weapons of our warfare. We are dealing with unseen forces. We are dealing with demonic powers. <laughs> we are dealing with forces. I'm talking about the second benefit of speaking in other tongues. We are dealing with powers. Now, seven armor defensive weapons were mentioned. Of course, only two of them are offensive as well as being defensive. There are a number of weapons mentioned there. For my head with the helmet of salvation, Paul dressed the spiritual soldier, God's army, to their feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, which is our boot. But he, after dressing us up, that's called the armor of God, he defined the two of the weapons that have ability to not just protect the believer, but can also affect the enemy. He put in the hand of that warrior, dressed up, the sword of the spirit, which is the Rema word. That's what they call the prophetic word. That when you speak under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you can, can mess the enemy up. But then, in verse 18, he puts another very deadly weapon it calls a praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. That's praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. This is not different from praying in your natural language, praying in your own ability, like a normal man will pray. There's nothing wrong with that. But to fight spiritual battles, and sometimes you don't know where Satan has programmed something against you. Without care. Now, here is the point. There are spirit, the spiritual warfare going on. You're not fighting human beings. You're fighting unseen forces. So God gave us as the last weapon mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, 7 there, he calls it praying in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. And he said, in the course of also doing it, you watch with perseverance for all sins. In other words, this is not only going to benefit the one that is praying. If the enemy comes up against any of us, and we don't know, if we get in the spirit and start praying, the Holy Ghost will rise up because his job is to set up a standard against him. He said, when the enemy shall come like a fraud, the spirit of God will do what? We raise up a standard against him. Amazingly, something happened in that communion service. Uh, we're not using our own facility, so the people had a different program booked that morning. So while we were there, I knew there was a problem. I knew there was going to be. What? Because of the pressure, and that's why I warned our leaders who book all these meetings, you never do that again. Because of the pressure, they were saying, okay, you have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave. Uh, there's a wedding here this morning. 
It's an early morning meeting. I think it's Saturday, whether it's 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. And because of that, I was hurried up out of that. I was been able to stop everybody from moving. Because you see what happens is that the further you do, the picture gets clearer. These things are electronic signals, like how your phone, like text messages, how you pick all this thing. That's it. Sometimes you download, you notice that the text message is caught, it's just halfway. After a while, the other one comes. After a while, it comes. That's how this thing is. The big satellite in space, the spirit of God, the almighty God, the knowledge he has is dropping into your spirit. It's dropping into your receiver. Your human spirit. For the spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. But the same way the communication is going on between the spirit of God and your spirit is how all that important information is downloaded to you. Pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Then, using that same principle, praying in the spirit, you can use it to watch over the saints. In other words, that's how a pastor oversees the lives of the people. You can't be running around pursuing people up and down. You mount the mountain of prayer and by praying in the spirit, you, 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 you can put a protection over the flock. I used to say it and I still say it. You can't be under my covering and die anyhow and the enemy come and pluck you. It's not possible unless that person is not submitted to that covering. Because in the place of praying prayer, we provide spiritual oversight. It's not done by running up and down. And we can cut off where the enemy is trying to attack God's people. Just rose up and you can now see. Take note of those things that drop in your spirit when you start praying in the spirit. Now, let me tell you this. When you start initially, especially if you've been in the flesh, you've been in the activities of the day, uh, what will be going on is that your mind will be flashing up and down, getting distracted. Don't worry. As you go on, what happens is that finally... The mind comes out that divine discipline. It's just that water that will be rising. Finally, by the time it gets to the mind, the mind becomes clear. Initially, you'll be thinking about that, thinking about your wife, thinking about your, you know, depending on what and what you are into. Oh, I have, I have a meeting there. I have that. Yeah. And you'll be getting distracted until that water finally reaches the soul. Boo, the mind becomes clear. At that moment, what is called inspired thoughts, because a lot of people don't know how to hear from God. Inspired ideas. You know, things will begin to quicken. Sometimes some of the things you're even praying about, you start knowing what you're addressing. That's how people get interpretation of tongues. The word of knowledge comes on then the spirit of wisdom and revelation is activated. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 said, may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. All of a sudden, that inner eye is quickened. It becomes open. You start seeing, hey, is that what has been going on in my house? Every time this baby is sick, every time this baby, so oh, I hired a water spirit girl as my maid. And you can live with that person 20 years and not know. Because the things are going on until. And then a wise man will not just go and start accusing somebody of water. But now he knows. He has inside information. So he sets trap. Next thing, a person falls into it and he catches you red handed. You can imagine a woman went to a false prophet, false, all these bad places that people go in search of a baby and finally got pregnant. But she noticed that after she delivered this baby, a, a, a baby that has not started crawling, baby that cannot come down from the bed, she noticed. Ah, she will keep the baby on his bed and go out to do something. You come back and you see the baby on the floor somewhere near the mirror or somewhere. One time she even saw the baby in another room. And she wonder her. He said, each time she will feel good from you. Wonder, ah, what is happening? Who is bringing this baby down? And then when did this baby start crawling? <laughs> After it happened about three times, she went to talk to a friend of hers. Who is born again? And, and the lady said, First of all, you need to give your life to Christ. And the minister, Holy Spirit, and he said, Stop praying in the spirit. You will find out what is happening in your house. 
The maid will deny I'm not the one. And the maid will be in the kitchen and I'm cooking and this thing will happen. <gasps> so she started praying in the spirit. She started praying in the spirit. And then the Holy Spirit said, there's something I want to show you. Next time you put the baby on the bed, open, don't lock the door like you normally do. Open it small so you can look in and walk away. And say in the hearing of the baby that you are going out to go and see one of your friends. You can even go start your car, do like you're going out, then come back. After about five, ten minutes, just come back and walk in. You will see something. So, she did that. She said it around the babies, you know. And she was wondering, what am I doing? Does this baby hear what I'm saying? But she went ahead and did all that and went out and came back. And when she came in, what she saw was a snake. Clawed up, yes crawled out of the bed, back on the ground and then he started moving he went to the cosmetic section I don't know what they were looking for there and she now opened the door and her baby sat on the floor crying he said you devil you will tell me today what you are doing on the floor I put you on top of that bed she started crying hey, do it like this carry me he said who will carry you <laughs> and she now went and called <laughs> The, the lady and the lady came with three other prayer warriors. If you see manifestation, when they were doing the, the, a little baby, finally that demon left the child. Her own case was sad. The next day the baby died. But uh, there are cases where they were able to generate, get that devil out because the the soul, the devil cannot create any soul. He doesn't create anything. He can only possess, take it, and manipulate it. In that case, the baby died. So she wanted to cry. I said, shut up. Cry what? You give me to what can we kill you in future. You have learned your lesson. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, she went through the reverse. And they ended up having three other kids. Or before uncle, when you go to the in the night, you go to the bar beach and they finish all that, and you're asking the queen of what do you think is when you get pregnant, where, what do you think? What kind of child do you think that child is gonna be? A lady here was having all kinds of marriage problems. She's here. All kinds of marriage problems. He said her father told her. He said, mm, you know why you're having marriage problem? He said, no. He said, because you and your mother, you who came from the water. The devil does not create human beings. But when a woman goes to the water and makes such covenant and starts making sacrifice or you ask for baby, uh, a spirit will come in there and of course take over the child. There is no two ways about it. They will just possess one of the eggs and sperm and get them united and, and get a human being because the process of reproduction is already there naturally created by God. They will just possess the inward man and then problem continues from there. But you can get the evil out and recover the soul of the human being. All souls are mine. The souls of the father, the souls. Of... Now, just let you see the implication of praying in the spirit. So one of those other benefits is found in Jude 20. That scripture has only one chapter. So it just says Jude 20. In New Testament, not in the Old Testament. Just before the book of Epistles of John. There is the book of John, the gospel of John. There is the Epistles of John written by the same person. They have first John, second John, third John, before it, Jude. It's a building up your faith in your building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Building yourself up, activating your supernatural faith, you do it with speaking in other tongues. Now, years ago, before I stepped into the miraculous. 
I, I used to be amazed about this and about healing, miracles. How do these men of God do it? So um, a friend of mine will come to visit us in school. And he would throw a challenge. He said, get me students who can't hear, students who are blind, and all those kind of things. And we'll go and get. We'll get people who can move and hand. And, and I saw how he would just command this thing. And he was not struggling. That, because a fellow student, a second year student, was functioning in this, he brought it home. I used to think maybe there's something these guys have somewhere. Maybe there's a ring. You know, I met a Canadian preacher in those days. I went for his school, said, called Ernest Angeli. And I used to wonder, everybody he touches for, I used to wonder, you know. Um, but now, I met a student functioning in this. He came from his campus. And I used to bring him every year to our school. I was trying to study the power of the spirit, especially in the area of healings and miracles. I, I was hungry to be used by God to do that. And so one day, I asked him a question. I said, that boy whose hand was withered like this, how come you were not afraid? When I see that kind of thing, it's better for me to close my eyes and not see what the person is suffering from. Because if I see that kind of hand, all the faith inside me will disappear. How do you do it? Are you not frightened? He said, when I see such things, I'm also frightened. And I'm filled with doubt. He said, most of the time, people think I'm always like, he said, no. He said, what happens is that he showed me in the scripture, as you pray in the spirit, you drown your doubt and your fear. And then the faith of God, because there is a person inside you locked up there, which is omnipotence. He's that man that created this universe. If you check Genesis chapter 1, he said, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, he said, Pastor David, before I, I get to and said to the level of believing it and it happens, he said, there's something I do when I wake up in the morning. He said, some mornings I wake up, I don't even feel like I'm a Christian. I feel like normal people. I feel like there's nothing. But then I know I have this treasure in eighteen verse. And that the way to unlock it is praying in the spirit. So I start praying in the spirit. He said, as I pray in the spirit, what happens is that there is the natural human faith. There is the God kind of faith which comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. That one, you, when you hear the word, or like when you wake up, you study your word, you hear tapes, you soak yourself in revelation, it comes. With it, you can do many things. But then there is supernatural faith. There is supernatural faith. That one comes when you pray in the spirit. The other way it comes is sometimes through prayer and fasting. That's when Jesus said, why couldn't we cast him out? They asked him. They tried to cast out the devil that didn't go. He said, because of your unbelief. Then he turns and said, this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. What he's telling them is that there's a type of faith that is imparted in the place of prayer. Many of you have known what I'm talking about. You get into some of these worship meetings or prayer meetings, you notice that you feel like where is the devil? Let him show up. I'll break all his horns. How many of you have felt like that? You are not, you know, and then another time you are feeling like uh -uh, as if God is not there. It's your emotional. But then when you don't have the substance of faith in your spirit, you speak, nothing happens. That's why Jesus said, have the faith of God. If you do, you can say to this mountain. So you only have two ways to do it. Load your spirit with faith material called the word revelation see like we are here the word, revelation is coming everybody is charged up you can do so many things here what about in daily life one week after you're not in this kind of atmosphere you're in your shop you're in your work, workplace you're in whatever and something goes what happens if you're the type that lives on the word Always feed your spirit on the world. You won't need to get ready. You always have the substance in you. You can speak. You can address. What if somebody faints in your office? What if your manager faints? Don't you know that the promotion you've been looking for comes in form of problems? What if that company is going through crisis and God wants you to provide wisdom to help and then you are going to benefit later like Daniel or Joseph? 
You are not there. You become helpless like every other person. No. So he said to me, he said, this is what I do. When I look inside, there is no substance. I start praying in the spirit. I pray in the spirit. I pray in the spirit. I pray. That water will be rising. Finally, it gets to the mental level. It, it wipes my fear and doubt. Then it gets to my, my spirit. It's energized with the faith of God. He said, and I come back. I look at that thing. It's like nothing. I said, my friend, stretch that hand. And the guy stretches the hand. He's healed. I operate like Jesus. I turn things upside down with a spoken word. I say, be healed. He's healed. I say, now I know it. Ah! I've caught it. It's the same Holy Ghost you have that I have. It's just I didn't know how to use what I have. Now I know it. So next time he was with me in a minute, I said, wait, it's my turn now. Because I had born at least an hour, 15 minutes, praying in the spirit. And the water rose up to my spirit. I, I came into that meeting. Because I went once, ordered for blind people. Um, I decided to hold an eye clinic in school. About 300 people showed up because we really boosted in the name of the Lord. You take glasses like this. When I feel nobody was healed, I said, God, I will tear this Bible. <laughs> A friend of mine said, if you tear the Bible, it has not affected God. You are the one that is torn. You better go and learn what you don't know. Because there are principles for everything and they get results. There are no respecter of person. I say, wow, I've got it. I've got it. The word of sickness can never frighten me again. And that is how I stepped into the miraculous. Started doing it in the school. Before long, we started opening deaf ears. Before long, we started opening blind eyes. One day I came to class. I just finished having devotion that morning. And this thing, I just walked into class, chemistry class. And the auditorium is like this, like a theater. And the lecturer wasn't showing up. Five minutes, I was sitting at the back, no, nothing. The students were just gisting. And I was, something was boiling my head. Maybe I should go down and talk to everybody. But at the same time, I didn't want that lecturer. I know him. He knows me. I don't want him to catch me preaching. Because we have had a confrontation before and he told me you will not graduate here. <laughs> so I, I didn't want him to catch me preaching in, in his lecture hour. Any other person, yes. But then this one, but I noticed he wasn't showing up. And then all of a sudden, it was a blind man with a little boy that came to beg and walked in at that. that I said, this is exactly what I've been looking for. This is my colleagues have I've tried with them arguing. Sometimes we argue. I just stepped down and walked down there. And I put my hands on the boy and then on the man. I said, we can give you money and I don't mind giving you. But what about your dad or your uncle being healed? Wouldn't you like it? The little boy said yes. I remember we have gone before to bring a deaf person to here. Uh, no, a blind man to here. And he's a student of the school. This one is not a student. He's just a beggar. A student of the school. And he said he doesn't want to see. That that is his asset. Because he plays guitar. He sings well. He said that's how Steve Wonder made his millions. That he's preparing himself. That I didn't know that there are people like that. I didn't know that. Until you experience something, it sounds queer. But anyway, so I talked to the man a little. I didn't know students are very funny people. All kinds of comments were being made there. Give the man money. What do they do? Well, you want to dodge the thing by giving him prayer. All kinds of, you know, these are my classmates. Then finally, I looked up. I said, gentlemen, we, are going to, we can give this man money after, but why don't we give him a gift that the Almighty gave him and the enemy robbed him of his sight. Let's give it to him back. Everybody, those who are reading, close their book. <laughs> Students are very interesting people. 
All you have to do is convince them because they know. Beggar is a beggar. They know him. I said, let's help him with his sight. That Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. If he is really true, what he did. Oh, at that moment, the Christian student, tongues everywhere. I have put myself in trouble on the line. So they were praying, oh God, don't disgrace your... your <laughs> <all kinds> of, <laughs> the ones who are born again in my class, all, all of them, they said, hey, at the back of my mind, there was only one fear there. Let that lecturer not meet me here. But anyway, and I said a few words to the man and just touched his eyes. Receive back your sight. And the way the law of the spirit works, once you've spoken it, it happened. You don't wait till the man starts seeing before you know. That's why a lot of you are not tutored in this thing. You don't wait. So I said to him, you can see. Because I rebooked the spirit of blindness and he left. If he staggered back a little. And then, and I asked Lord, I said, correct all the damages in his eye. You know, optical system. If the lenses are damaged, whatever it is, fix it. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son. <laughs> uh, I say, you can see. He kept quiet. I said, you can see now. He kept quiet. I said, you can see now. He said, yes. I said, can you see me? And I did like it. He nodded his head. I said, can you see me? He nodded his head. <laughs> If you're with me in one of those meetings where the brother old man that was blind. Remember, when I asked him, can you see me? He said, no, my son. I, in a, on a crusade, open crusade, and I brought him out. He said, no, my son. I said, you can see. Look at me. I said, can you see me? He said, no, my son. But if you understand the law of faith. I said, yes, you can see. And I did one more like this. He said, yeah, I can see your hand. And I answered, oh yeah. As the moment I started running, the guy is pursuing me, touch my nose, all those kind of things. And he's done. So the, the man started seeing, and all of a sudden, guess what? The students stood up and started clapping. I've got their attention. Because the miracle is just a sign, like signboard. It points to something. Miracle is not an end in itself. It's something to point people to Christ. It's something to point people so that you can actually lead them to Christ. If you're involved in soul winning, you care about people, souls. You have to also trust God to use you in this dimension because it's the fastest way to end argument. And you don't have to do long preaching. So at that moment... I had to make a statement because I noticed that that clapping looked like it was for me. I said, I cannot do that. I don't have any gift or skill that can do that. But I know one person that can and his faith in him that has done what you've seen. And I introduced Christ in a few minutes. and said, how many of you will give your life to praying in the spirit? Building up yourself in your most holy faith. This is how you drown your fear and your doubt. Because there are some, some, certain things that come. Ah, they gave you that prognosis. You have breast cancer. Fear will grab you. Uh, it's natural. It's normal. It's natural human reaction. What do you do after that? And sometimes if you notice that you are alone, get one or two in partnership. Learn to pray at least for an hour. If something is important, why are you not giving it the time it requires? Learn to pray for at least an hour. To get that inner realm unlocked. When it's un unlocked, point to the same cancer, cause it to die. It will die and wither away. After some days, you will go there, you will not see the same thing. You will wither in your system. You can protect your physical body and keep your system in order by utilizing the power of the indwelling Christ. Hey, 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 am I helping anybody? Now, 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 I'm aware that there are people here who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. So when we go into the breakout session, that's one of the first things we're going to do for you. And they will minister Holy Spirit baptism. It, don't be on earth and be powerless. There are, oof, the warfare is going on. It's either you're on God's side or you're in the enemy's side. You can't be neutral. You become a victim. 
Life is not, life is. Life is a warfare. And the battles of life are primarily spiritual. You can start walking in the miraculous. You don't have to have the ability in your own natural faith. Just know how to unlock the faith of God. It comes into your soul. Sometimes people feel like they are even possessed. Some people feel like there is a believability inside you. You can believe. How you know that is not your normal faith is that when that thing comes down, the same thing, like Elijah, you know, he, he, he spoke to the water, he struck the water, he divided another. It, when he is normal, he's back in his normal self. He will look at River Jordan. He will wonder, Are you, sh- are, you mean this water actually divided for me to pass? Like Moses who spoke to the Red Sea and he divided. When your natural human person is back, is more in control. But at that moment, the testimony of miracles is just like normal. That's how God operates. But he lives on the side of you. Put your hands on your belly again. Say, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Put your hands on your heart. Say, it. greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I have the greater one on my inside. And he can take care of anything on the outside. Jesus on the inside, walking on the outside. Oh, what? What is that? The last word. What a change in my life. I love that. Let me close. This is actually the reason I came up. And that's what the word God asked me to give you. God gave us ability to participate in realizing our destiny through the speaking in tongues. One of the benefits of speaking in tongues, especially uh, those of you who are talkatives, who lose control of your anger, of your emotion. Some of you are extremely emotional, maybe as it relates to the opposite sex. Some of us are lose control of our tongue. One of the purpose of the speaking in another tongue is to gain dominion over yourself, to gain control of your tongue. And once you gain control of your tongue, you can control your whole destiny. You can control your whole life. You can control your emotions. You can control your anger. You can control your responses if you learn to control your tongue. Nothing goes wrong till you say something wrong. And nothing goes right till your words are right. What kills marriages? What kills relationships are bad words. You will not regret if you don't say it. When you are angry, when you keep that. Now, a person that prays in tongues gains control. You know the Bible said, we put Ruda in the horse's mouth. And then we can control that wild beast. Horse can be very stubborn. But the key to controlling the horse is not tying the head, it's not tying the leg, it's not tying the tail, it's gaining dominion over the mouth. That thing they put on the mouth, then you sit on the back, you now hold it with it. You can make that thing bend down. You can make it stand up. You can make it obey you. Yet, go and see a horse that is not under control. It can throw you out. You can, horses are wide. You tame a horse by face, taming his mouth. The scripture said a sheep is so big, yet it's just a little rudder that controls the whole sheep. The center with the aircraft, the center with your car, just the steering. He said the same way the tongue is so small, but yet it controls a man's life and destiny. And the Bible warns us about using it to bring bitter water and sweet water at the same time. With it, we bless people, with it, we curse people. He said, No, it ought not to be so, my brethren. Then he said, every wild beast, human beings have learned to train. Do you know they've learned to train cobras? They've learned to train lions. 
even bring some of the elephants, bring them into circuits, put them with human beings, and people will be watching. They've trained all kinds of beasts. He said, yet nobody has been able to train the tongue. But he said, if a man gains control, is able to control his tongue, he's a matured man, he's a disciplined man, that man will have the ability to control his whole body. He said, the tongue is a little evil in our member that sets on course, the course of nature. People's destinies can be thwarted by their words. People's destinies can be aligned by their words. Now, here is the point. God gave us ability now to bring our system under control by giving the Holy Ghost the control of our tongue. When you learn to pray in the spirit, you will not only have wisdom, you will have utterance. You have spirit-giving words. It will not be you speaking like the scripture said. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. But beyond utterance, you will have the control over your tongue. Your, the quality of your words will start improving. They will begin to be words that carry grace, that minister grace to the hearer. The level of filth, the level of distortions in your words will start dec- and, and, and so we find that what flows out of you are just pure living streams that can minister life, that can encourage people, that can edify people, things that can. And people who live around you will be blessed. But what drives people away from people? Bad words. That's one of the greatest enemies of relationships. Marriages. You speak to your husband in a nice way. In a kind way. You speak to, you minister strength to him. Not uh, you foolish man. You were, when you talk like that, your tongue has not been circumcised. The way you talk to your wife. I, I have this uh, study I did on seven types of criticism, especially that destroy relationships and marriage. And it said criticism begins inside. At that moment, you sense you're hungry, but you have not said anything, but you'll be piling it. You're just observing faults. You're just... Finally, it becomes verbal. At this time, and, and it's so bad because at this time you just talk to the person. But at that moment, it's still within the range where it can be saved. Because it's just you talk, telling the person what is wrong, what, what, but you're criticizing, you're finding fault, you're all that. But at the third level, you start talking to other people in the absence of the person. That one at that moment, you are doing serious damage. And that's what people do. They go meet their father that discussing their husband in the negative. Or meet their girlfriend that discussing their spouse in the negative. At the fourth level, you talk to other people negatively in the presence of the person. You don't even care that the person is around. I met these pastors who we wash their wife, finish their wife in the presence of the church. You don't care. When it reaches that public criticism, whether you are there or not, don't care. You can, you say, you are dev- you are, you are, that marriage is just. But all those levels, seven levels of negative talks, the Holy Spirit, when we learn to, you know, Christianity is spirit controlled living. We're not like natural people. We're no more teaching Christianity. I don't know what is going on in the body. Now, I know, you know, I don't know what is going on. Maybe what we we'll eat, what we we'll drink, the aspect of meeting physical need is, is overtaking spiritual development. And that means count, discipleship is going down. And that's why you have all kinds of things happening in the body of Christ today. By so called Christians doing things that sometimes even unbelievers will not do. No. When you pray in the spirit, you water your spirit, man, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of godly character, integrity, love, joy, peace, gentleness, temperance, self control. You say, ah, I saw the guy, I shook, 
My emotion was running. Mm -mm, your emotion will come under control. You, you, you become, you start maturing. Romans chapter 8. Now, we just have between now and tomorrow morning here. So, we have to take advantage of the remaining time to implement some of these things. And here is what God asked me to tell you. He said, what he wants to do with you is not just for 2010-11, that he wants to realign what he has for you in destiny, what he has for you, the plans he has for you, even up to the next couple of years to come. Some of us who will get into this well will so align the next five years. Some of us can even align a number of years longer than that. Prayer is never wasted. When it goes into God's presence like incense, it will definitely create a harvest here on earth. So, you don't, in prayer, you don't just take care of present, your present needs and all of that. You take care of your predestination. You take care of your destiny, your purpose. You are what your future will be like. Let me give you an example. A pastor, Kenny Hagen, was praying. Uh, I think he was 36 years old. And his wife had simple goiter and the neck swore. And uh, they were about to operate on her. And he was praying, really taken by this. So he kept praying in the spirit. And it got to a point. And the Holy Spirit said, tell. He said, first of all, I want to let you know this. If they operate on her, she's going to die. Because according to her destiny, she's supposed to die when you are 36. Can you hear? Look at that kind of thing. First time I read it, I said, what kind of usually, who, who made that kind of destiny? Then, is that explaining that certain human beings you know, either because of the families that are born into, because of certain things that are going on there, certain things have been designed for them. You know how you're born into a royal family, you have a chance of becoming a king. At least you are. You're born into a priestly family, you're going to become a priest. Some people, because of certain places they are born into, you can be born into a family carrying a cause of death. There's a colonel in the army. I had to help out on this. Because somewhere along there, he realized that he was the only oldest man uh, and his cousin left in the family. Once you get to the age of 50, 52, it's time for you to die. That's when his father died. His father's brother, the other brother, another, and some, the two oldest persons left just got around that time. Mysteriously, they just died. Fear grabbed him. Because that destiny is not the one God said. Something has happened. There were human sacrifices that have been made, their, their father, all kinds of things, that has brought that problem in, in that family. But what about this one that is a believer? Do you know there are some people, it is when they are going to give birth, that's where the exit will be. Because either through their mother or through their own involvement, they have actually entered some kind of things with the negative world. The water, the water spirit problems and all that. There are some people, it is from the moment they get married, they will never have peace again. Now, here is the point. If there are negative issues in your predestination, predestination is destiny, predetermined. Pre simply means before. These things are said before you are born. That's what it means. If there are negative components in it, praying in the spirit can alter it. But then the plan of God for you, which is the part I'm interested in, all the wonderful things he has, had, he has in stock or he planned for you to be, praying in the spirit can align you into it. And that is the part I really want to drop for us as I, I drop this. You can align the coming year. You can align the year that is going to follow in prayer. When you hear the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, you can actually align your steps. 
You can even align relationships. There are people who are there who the enemy plays there to bring deviation. This, di, di, you know, distract you from destiny. Prayer can sort them out. After a while, something will come up that will disconnect that relationship. It will just come up. A harvest of what has been sorted out in the spirit will just emerge. Something will just, you know. But then there are sometimes other people that are destiny partners. They are part of your destiny. Because nobody is an island. There are people that God has put alongside with you to accomplish your purpose. Where he sent Jesus, he sent John the Baptist. The same angel announced their birth. Do you know there are some people that the same angel that announced your birth announced that just because your mother didn't see the angel coming to him saying, uh, you're going to conceive, you're going to have a baby girl. That, this is what that girl is going to be doing in life. And some of us, because we have not discovered this thing, are even, as at now, are not even doing anything about what we are born to do. Praying in the spirit can align you. I heard from the Lord there are a couple of ministers here who right now are not in ministry, but they have the calling. And some of them are even carrying stronger callings and anointings than some of us that are ministering to you. But that anointing will not come and start functioning because they've not stepped into their mandate. There are people that some in their future, they're going to get into government, yet they're not going to contest election. Like their queenlies and all these other people, they are going to be appointed into it. Prayer, we orchestrate that destiny and make sure it doesn't fail. Now, there, 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 there are some other people who are going to bet businesses, but right now they are earning good salary and they don't want to think about any other thing. They just want to stay in their comfort zone and all that. Now, my mama, Elisco, but he should take her. Leader Aka, Leader Kasa, I heard from the Lord that there are some businesses that are meant to rise this year. God spoke to those individuals, quickened their spirit, gave them their ideas. As at now, they have not started doing anything. There are a few that took a few steps and some of them pulled back. Yet the millions you are believing God for to be able to do the things that God has put in your heart are there. But they won't come until you cooperate with God. Prayer will help you align. There is something called predestination. There's something called destiny, purpose. There's something called what has been programmed concerning you is written in your book. Do you know there are people here carrying books inside them? Books. There are people carrying songs that will bless a whole generation. And you leave some of them the way they are, walking in the flesh, they might finish and exit this earth and never release that thing they are carrying. There are people that are designed that as at this season they are going to move into another level in whatever they are doing because life is in phases. Life is in phases. You finish primary school, you go to secondary school. If you finish secondary school, you go to. It is praying in the spirit that connects to destiny. There is a direct connection between predestination and praying in the Holy Ghost. Predestination. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that sat with the other two members of the Trinity and decided your future. And the same Holy Spirit now is helping you to line up, to pray yourself in. And when you start praying, sometimes you start gaining understanding of where you are supposed to be going. People say, I don't know my purpose. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Hey! Lift up your hands. Ah, Baba. That rain has started falling. That's the main reason I came up here. Did I go to Shadalia? Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. There's something that's going to align. There's something. There are people you are going to meet. There are people you are supposed to connect to. Your tongue will align you to them. Your tongue will align you to them. Hey! 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 Your tongue will align you to the gather gather. The man you are supposed to marry. That woman you are supposed to marry. Right now, some of you are not even in touch with them. Praying in the spirit will align your path to cross. Gidagadaga. Hey, Gidigi! Adago!
Somebody here, the enemy has planned that you are not going to sit at the first December. But as you are praying the spirit, that record is going to be cancelled. That record is going to be thwarted. Even now, by the authority vested in me, in the name of Jesus, we disappoint that other crew of death. We overturn the cancel of the enemy and we release you from the cage. are not filled with the Holy Ghost, open up your mouth. That anointing is here. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth and you release your prayer language. Open up your mouth. God is going to fill your mouth. 
Open up your mouth and start speaking. As you pray, the Holy Ghost is going to start speaking out to you. Open up your mouth. Even if you're not there with the Holy Ghost before, open up your mouth. The gift of tongue is being released. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Receive it. Receive the utterance to speak in the Lord tongues. Receive the utterance. Jesus name just keep standing Op open up your Bible to Romans chapter 8 verse 26 when we read it we close it and put it back on the ground and then your, with your tongue you're going to connect these things that are ahead of you that you are not just reaching I'm sure you heard that you bet it first in the spirit and then you manifest here that's how you do it uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 26 likewise the spirit the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities our weaknesses whether it's physical or spiritual when you're weak inside turn on to this new strength for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered you know if you read down this chapter you will see where he said no one can lay anything to to the charge of god's elect nobody can accuse us successfully because jesus is at the right hand of god making intercession for us so god gave us two intercessors one in heaven talking to the father on our behalf then one on earth to align us to the intercession of jesus in heaven so that our what we are asking for on earth and what he's asking for we agree and at that moment it happens is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Now, Jesus, how can Jesus be able to say, Father, help this man. He is called to be a governor. He's one of the people that will help. And why he's saying to the Father, your head saying, Father, I want to travel to U.S. I want to live all my life in U.S. Okay, Jesus is in heaven saying, Father, Ada and John are meant to be. There is partnership in their destiny. They are connected in destiny. Help them to discover each other. Open their eyes to see. Why that is going on? John is on earth praying about a kaite. Father, I've been talking to a kaite. She has not been listening. Convince her. Let her know that I'm her man. Now, we know not what we should pray for. Okay. In heaven, they have seen that there is an accident. That's going to take off this guy. June 2011. And in heaven they are trying to thwart it. And on earth. The guy is asking the father to make sure he makes that journey. Meanwhile what they are trying to do is to stop that journey in the first place. Or postpone it. Or find another way. And he's. We know not. Because we only observe what is obvious. What we can see now. Because we can't see. But well, there is somebody who has access to tomorrow. Who knows the future better than we know the present? It's the Holy Spirit. He's a member of the Trinity. He's part of that conspiracy that governs the universe. And he's now living inside us. Now, he helps that our weaknesses, our shortcoming, our limitation. By making intercession for us according to the word. That's why God gave us this gift. So he can bypass our mind what we are thinking or what we are not thinking. To pray those things that is for our good. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Is somebody here when you live here now the person you are supposed to marry will just come into your life because he's here he's being arranged right now he's being arranged if the guy is in you and something will enter him to come back for this december just to come and meet you i've seen it happen so many times 
if the guy is in Abuja, an event will occur where two of you are going to meet. And once you meet, something will click. He will travel back. He can't forget that girl. It will be calling. It will be a next thing. Let's complete it. We don't know what you should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit make it intercession for us according to the will of God. And he makes this intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. Things you can't say in articulate speech. It's not in your normal language. Verse 27. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, he said, I'm not understanding what I'm saying. But he said, God who searches the heart knows what the Holy Ghost is saying. And look at verse 28. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That verse 28 is hanging on verse 27 and 26. People who pray in the spirit this way, no matter what the enemy arranges, God turns it for their good. Because this praying controls your destiny so it doesn't allow anything that will knock it out instead it converts everything to walk to your aid and then verse 29 you see prayer and predestination prayer and destiny verse 29 for whom he foreknew I told you that he has foreknowledge he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestinated, these he called. Whom he called, these he justified. Whom he justified, those same people he glorified. The same people he glorified. There is glorification for me. I don't know where you are. Are you at the level of glorification? At the level of justification? Or at the level of calling? I answered my own call when I came to give my life to Christ. Not long after that, I also answered the call for my destiny, what I'm called to do. But beyond calling, there is glorification when God puts you on center stage for the world to see what he has done. When God has made his glory manifest in your life. When he has exalted you and, and, and shown every destiny will end in glorification. So it shouldn't terminate with justification. Justification is where you receive Christ. You see, God knew you before you got born again. But by his working out of your plan, he brought you to Christ. But that's not where your journey is supposed to end. There is a destiny that will end in glorification. Not in shame. Not in disgrace. Say it with me, I will not end in disgrace. I will not end in shame. I'm sure you know the scripture. It says, he that believeth in him shall not be confounded shall not be put to shame there is glorification that is the time when Joseph became a prime minister that's that time when David finally is sitting as king over Israel where is your own there is something praying in the spirit will connect you all through the journey and make sure you get there it will guarantee that nothing that happens will thwart the plan of God for your life he said purpose needs prayer to really come to pass because purpose can be thwarted purpose needs prayer for it to happen because purpose can be derailed there are people who have died before their time there is such a thing as premature death it's not when God planned it the enemy there are people who have deviated completely from their purpose it's not God prayer aligns you to your destiny and takes care of all those things that try to waylay your destiny so that even if they say you like Joseph it will just be free passport to where you are supposed to be going when you finish you find out that you are that this guy just helped you get to where you are supposed to be going you can keep your bible down Please come, somebody come and get my Bible. Now, we're going to do it. The remaining part of 2010, 2011, 2012. 
so much is going to happen. We're in Jubilee season. All of those things that heaven is carrying concerning you that are not yet here. Or maybe it's some that are beginning, but it's not clicking fully. They are going to align. 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 I call for your destiny. In the name of Jesus, I call for your destiny. I call for their destiny. That next level, that next level for your life, that next level, you are not going to stagnate anymore. Hey, hey, open your mouth, it's your time. Look at Lila, don't shake it. Look at Lila, don't go say it. Calabono, Calabono, Correa. For you, call it forth. There's another level in your finances. There's another level in your relationships. There's another level in your career. Call it forth. There's another level. Let's like go. You're moving to another level. Hey. hey, ministry at another level. Hey.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever that belongs to you, that's occupied by the enemy, is going to leave their hands now and enter your hands. Nigeria belongs to you and you're going to eat the good of this land. You won't live here as if you're a foreigner scratching. No. This land is designed by God to be your land and be a blessing to you. From now, I command for the four corners of this nation, the four winds of this nation, to start blowing a wind of jubilee in your direction, a wind of favor in your direction, a wind of restoration in your direction. From finances to relationships to family to every area, it, this land will not be a land that eats up its inhabitants. It will be to you a land of milk and honey. People are saying there is no job. You'll be talking about how many you have done and the new ones you are getting. We still have a lot to cover before we leave here. There are different aspects of destinies that God is going to be addressing. Tonight, we're going to be having some special, you know, meeting here. This evening by 6. That will mark everyone's destiny permanently. The year 1990 was a major turning point for me. It was one year God invested so much in me that carried me for about two years. I reaped for till around I crossed the year 2000, you know, uh, 2000 and beyond what I, I, I got in the year 1990. What God is going to be doing in you in this meeting and this is like especially this is going to carry you for more than 10 years to come yeah. it's going to carry you for more than 10 years Spirit of me, this heart Hope of a life spent with grace here to worship here I am to bow down, here I am to say.